You're listening to Tim Bulkley's 5-Minute Bible Babbling about Babel The story in Genesis 11 is really striking and fun Try the exercise I did when I was first teaching this story Do a Google search for pictures of Babel One of the ones I came up with was lovely A gorgeous photo of one of those traditional Renaissance paintings of the Tower of Babel with photos of Steed and Mrs. Peel, the Avengers, sitting on it, and Steed's umbrella stuck in the top like the decoration on a sand castle. Don't know what it means, but it was fun. And that's actually many people's reaction to this story. We don't know what it means, but it's fun. And the story's a bit like that. A bit larger than life. This is one of those stories where point of view is very evident. The narrator's point of view is made quite clear, unusually. Verse 3 They had brick for stone, and bitumen for mortar. Breaks the frame of the story. Reminds us that this is someone telling us the story of Babel. And the story itself is set at some time in the distant past, or far away, where they do things differently. And then we get the point of view of the tower builders, in quotes of their speech. They're an organised lot. Come, let's make us bricks, and burn them thoroughly. But they're also people of ambition. Come, let's build ourselves a city, and a tower with its top in the heavens. Let's make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered upon the face of the whole earth. This is almost poetry. Formal speech in the Bible often is almost poetry. But notice how they repeat Adam and Eve's mistake. A tower with its top in the heavens and make a name for ourselves. Those are their aims. These are not only the grandiose centralizing dreams of the average state. These are also another in that series and progression of stories that illustrate the fall of humanity, or humanity's fallen state. Just as Adam and Eve reached out their hands and took the fruit, dreaming of becoming like God. So too the people of Babel dream of making a name for themselves and of drawing everyone in. And just as in Genesis 3 the result of their dreams is ironically the opposite of their intentions. Just as there, here too, human community created by God is broken into disunity by God, as a response to human ambition. Come, let's make a name for ourselves and all that stuff. Let's become famous, so that we won't be scattered over the whole world. And after God has stooped down to have a look at this magnificent project, presumably he can't see it from where he is, God gives us the gift of language to confuse us. So the people had to stop building the city, because the Lord confused their language and scattered them over all the earth. That's how the city of Babel got its name. Confusion and Babel, instead of unity and pride. So, at one level at least, this story forms a clear part of that sequence of stories in Genesis 1-11 to that tell us how we got to be the way we are. Or indeed, Tell us. Make us really see the way we really are. Because just as we are Adam and Eve, so we too are Babelites. We want to make a name for ourselves. We want to be known. Well, I do, otherwise I wouldn't be doing these podcasts, would I? Think about it. But the more we want to make a name for ourselves, the more God will give us Babel, the gift of language or at least of languages. Language is fun. We humans find so many ways to say things, and so many ways to speak in ways that other humans can't quite understand. Just think of all the teenage languages that there are. Each little tribe has its own collection of words and meanings. Not only can adults not understand, but other teenagers can't understand either, unless they belong to the same group. Language is a basic part of being human, and it involves defining who's in and who's out. And so to the Greeks, 
barbarians were anyone whose language was not Greek the people who babbled you see Babel is about being in and out what's hot and what's not the only trouble is God steps into Babel and what's hot is not and speech becomes babble bye bye bless you TTFN